have to match. For density times volume, density is grams per milliliter. The volume is milliliter over one. We see milliliters would cancel. We'd be left with grams. That's what mass is. So analyzing the units will guarantee that our problem is set up correctly and we can't get the problem wrong. What we can find in an equation, if we have one equals one, we can either add something to both sides or we can multiply, or we can divide, or we can subtract. Adding and subtracting are the same. Adding negatives is like subtracting. Multiplying by a fraction is the same as dividing by it. x divided by x equals 1 x times 1 over x becomes x over x, which equals 1. These are subtle, but they come in very handy to remember. I call this going back to kindergarten. It's learning your ABCs. When you remember how to deal with these simple algebraic manipulations, we can add, add or subtract, or we can multiply, which is multiplying or dividing. Those are generally all we really need to do in order to solve the majority of chemistry problems. Now, what we'll see is that we need to convert units at times. And a good equation to do this with is the temperature scale. And the temperature scale can be written as the temperature centigrade. Well, this equals five ninths times, so we have our parentheses, times, we'll put our bracket there. The temperature that will usually be given is Fahrenheit minus 32. This is a good equation because we have a fraction, we have a multiplication, we have an addition or a subtraction. So a common question we would encounter, usually the first test in our chemistry class, would be, what is the temperature in Fahrenheit if the temperature is 100 degrees in centigrade? Usually the first thing you want to do is put 100 in for centigrade thinking we're halfway home, but we don't do that. What we do is we solve what's called solving the equation for F. So first off, what we see is with this multiplication here, we need to get rid of this. And the way we do that is multiplying everything in the bracket the side of the equation by its reciprocal. Five ninths reciprocal is nine fifths. So nine fifths times five ninths times the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. Keep it in a bracket now so we know. This is three multiplications in there. See, no more writing x's. We know parenthesis next to parenthesis and multiplication. Now, since we did that to this side of the equation, we also need to do it to this side. So the reciprocal of 5 is what we'll find the temperature in centigrade times 9 fifths, parentheses, 9 fifths, now equals this. So from mathematics, it's, algebra is always making things simpler to read. 9 fifths times 5 ninths of reciprocals just cancels to equal 1. So now we have the 
temperature in Fahrenheit, minus 32. We're going to keep this in parentheses. Equals 9 fifths of the temperature in centigrade. Parentheses, brackets. There's multiplication going on here. So now, in order to isolate the temperature in Fahrenheit, we have the temperature minus 32. All we have to do is add 32 to both sides of the equation. So on this side, plus 32. Minus 32 plus 32, zero. So now we have the temperature, degree Fahrenheit. This is where the parentheses brackets comes in extremely helpful. I can't emphasize it enough. What we already have here is what we're adding 32 to. So if we keep the parentheses and the bracket, both degrees sent. plus 32. We avoid the problem of adding 32 to this value and that value and confusing ourselves. So what we'll see now, if we take the temperature centigrade, let's say it was 100. 100 times 9 would be 900 over 5 plus 32 equals the temperature in Fahrenheit. So what do we find? 900 divided by 5 turns out to be 180. 180 plus 32 equals 212. 212 degrees Fahrenheit It's the temperature at which water boils at sea level at a certain temperature, room temperature. 212 Fahrenheit equals 100 degrees centigrade. Centigrade technically doesn't get written with a C. It's just degree. Fahrenheit is degree F. So this is why 100 degrees centigrade water boils 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, the key is solve the problem with the symbols first. This is the power of algebra. And this is why algebra, once you master it, is so useful. PV equals NRT. This is a popular equation in chemistry. Pressure, volume, and temperature are the variables that we're considering here. N we'll find will be constant. R is the universal gas constant. So pressure, volume, or temperature are the three variables. But notice, it's a straight multiplication across. So I mean, it's the ease. Anything we divide or multiply by, we don't need to add or subtract to. So if we remember this form of it, PV equals NRT, we can go through algebra and solve for any of these. So a good exercise to solve for is R. We'll find what the value of R is at any given pressure, volume, and temperature. So for example, the first thing we could do, there's numerous things we can, is we'll divide to isolate R by itself. So we'll need to divide both sides of the equation by N and both sides by T. So let's start here with PV equals NRT. We'll divide both sides by N over T. Put our little thing in there. Divide this side by nt, 